Hi guys and welcome back to our FIFA 20 Sunderland Road to Glory career mode. So today we are starting off our second season back in the Premier League and I did say in the last episode that I wanted you guys to leave your suggestions for players to buy, to sell, etc, etc, etc. So in this episode what we're going to do, we're going to go through um, some of the transfers, selling some players as well. We've got quite a busy episode uh, that I do have planned up here but it doesn't usually go to plan but we'll see if it does. But then once we have gone through all the transfers and selling plays and stuff, we will be playing the first game of the season against Arsenal, which is where we will then leave uh, leave the episode. We'll end the episode there. But let's get straight into the transfers. So we have three players that I do want to go for. Now, one of them I did mention in the last episode, he does have a really small release clause in comparison to what he will be worth. And that is Barco. So we'll go and find Barco. Uh, Ezekiel Barco, I believe his name is. Yes, it is. 23 years of age. He can play on the left. He can play as a camp. He can play as a striker as well, which is really, really useful. And he also has a release clause of 13.6 million, which we are going to trigger because I'm sure by now this lad will be rated about 80, 81 maybe. So for 13.6 million, we're getting a new player on the left. McGeady has just left as well. Uh, I, am, I am going to sell Nemecha. I have spoke with a lot of you guys and a lot of you guys left your comments. They think I should sell Nemecha because, of course, Parrot is our main striker and we usually only play one up top anyway. So Nemecha is going to go in the transfer list. So I'm going to go for Barco and get this one out of the way. And we are going to pay his release clause of 13.6 million, which is an absolute bargain. But you will see very soon that there's an even bigger bargain coming up. Uh, in this episode, I'm really excited. It was one of you guys who suggested it, who pointed it out to me. And it was a player that was actually already on the shortlist, but I didn't realise the the, uh, the release clause that the guy did have. But you'll see anyway. I'm badly not here. Let's get into negotiations with Barco. He wants a crucial squad role, which leads me to believe that he does have a relatively high rating. We'll accept it. I did try and give him an, give him an important squad role, but he wants crucial, so we're going to have to give it him. He wants a five-year deal, which is absolutely fine. He is only relatively young at 23 years of age. I don't want to give him a release clause. He wants 31.5k a week, which isn't bad at all. I remove the bonus, in the which he'll probably up the wage a little bit. He does. 36k, we'll agree to that. And that is the start of our transfer window. We have signed Barco, our first signing of the season. A player I'm really, really happy to bring to the club. It's a player that's always suggested, actually, and I never really go for him. But there we go. He is rated 80, and he does look good in that Sunderland kit. Really, really good stats as well. We'll have a look at him in just a moment. We'll have a look at his stats. As you can see, he has a four-star weak foot, three-star skill moves, which isn't great, but I like how he has a high attacking work rate and a low defensive work rate as well. He is fast. He has that speed. Eight, sorry, 96 acceleration and 81 sprint speed. It's that acceleration that really sets him apart, really. And then uh, moving on, he has 87 dribbling, which is absolutely fantastic. Really, really good. He's really, really well-rounded for... Um, for a player to play in the final third. As you know, he can play on the left as a cam or as a striker as well. He's finishing 72, which isn't great, but uh, everything else is really, really decent. And 84 agility, 87 balance, just a really, really quality player to add to that final third. But now we're going to move on to putting some players on the transfer list. So the first player to go on the transfer list is Elliot Harris because he's just not going to improve at all. He did come in as a really sort of prospect, a player for the future, but he just... He's lost the uh, play with high potential icon in the training and he just isn't improving at all. So I think he's really hitting his peak already at just 18 years of age and he's taken ages to improve and to train. So he is going to go on the transfer list and also another centre-back who we haven't really given that much of a chance to be fair and that is Watmo because we've made the partnership between Pinnock and Twans be so good and Willis has been in there a lot. So Watmo is going to go on the transfer list as well because there is a centre-back, a really, really good centre-back that I'm going to try and squeeze over the line before the transfer window does close. And another player to go on the transfer list is going to be Nemecha. He is the player that we should get a decent amount of money for. He has put in a transfer request anyway, so he is actually already on the transfer list. Hanlon, I am going to leave. He's just going to be a backup striker, really. The thing is with Hanlon is his rating suggests that he's just a bit of an average striker. But if you look at his stats or, or his attributes, we'll have a look. His acceleration is 98. His sprint speed is 98. And his strength is 91 which is just insane. He's just such a good player to just bring on and cause a bit of problems towards the end of a game. So we're definitely going to keep him anyway. So there has been a slight spanner in the works. This player here, Arnie Meyer, was pointed out to me. Absolutely perfect. 83 rated, which is great. He has a release clause of 22.8 million and he's worth 30 million. He's, he can easily go for about 45 million, this lad. And he has a player face. I've gone to 
activate his release clause. And unfortunately, he has signed a pre-contract agreement with another club, which is absolutely gutting. That was the one that I really set everything on. So this does change things. But the other player I did want to bring in as a centre-back was Issa Diop, who does in real life currently play for West Ham. Of course, he's a very, very good player. Everyone knows about him. He's worth 26 million. He does have a release clause, sorry, of 38.9 million. And I don't think it'd be worth triggering that. Or it might be, because I think if we were to negotiate, we'd have to probably go just a bit over that anyway. As you can see, it does say that he could go between 33.4 million and 48.3. And 38.9 million, that release clause is bang in between that. So I think it might be the safe option to trigger that release clause, which of course we can't exactly do right now. So what we're going to do, we're going to skip forward, probably go through um, some of the preseason tournament, which of course we're going to simulate and uh, try and get some money together, sell some players and then move forward. I'm so annoyed that Arnie Meyer has signed a pre-contract with someone because that would have been absolutely class. It would have been perfect, but we've already hit uh, a bit of a hurdle in this uh, in this season, in this episode. So we will simulate the first game in the preseason tournament against Genoa. Come on, lads, give us a win. We need the money, essentially. That's all this is about. We need the money. Can we get the win? And we win by two goals to nil, and it is Magic, Marin, and Nemecha who comes on to score a goal as well. Unfortunately, he will be leaving the club though. And we have received a few transfer offers. One for Twanzaby, which I'm not even going to look at because we don't want to get rid of Twanzaby. Hoover, we don't want to get rid of either. We have an offer for Rose, our goalkeeper, 32.4 million, which is huge. But of course, there's no point because he's going to end up being one of the best keepers in the game by the time we've trained him up. But we do have an offer for Nemecha, 19.5 million, which I will negotiate to try and get a little bit more for him because he is rated really highly. It's just that Parrot has been so much better than him. We can try and get between 15 and 22 million. So I'll try and get another million or two on top of that 19.5 and see what we can do. Okay, so negotiations did not go to plan. I've literally put it up to 21 million and they were not happy with that whatsoever. 21 million, which is only 1.5 more than what he's actually worth anyway. The absolute cheapskates, but we'll have to wait for another offer to come in for the match now because I've absolutely screwed it. But we do have a transfer offer from Stad Renes from, uh, or for Jack Watmo, should I say, 5.3 million. I could try and get a little bit more. I think I might do. I'll try and get an extra million for him or so because it does say we can get up to about 6.8 million for him. Please just don't walk away because that was really annoying. They only went up 1 million more for Nemecha and they didn't want to pay that whatsoever. So you've offered 5.3. We'll say we'll go for 6.5. Come on, just give us 6.5 million. We're both happy. 5.6. Okay, 6 million. Come on, don't be, don't be tight. Just give us 6 million. Give us 6 million. I'll be happy with that. So Jack Watmore, give us six million. There we go, they're happy with it. Six million and hopefully that does that deal does go through and we can add that to our transfer budget. And the next simulator game against a team that I'm not going to pronounce. Can we get a win? Come on, lads, give us the money. And we win by two goals to one. Dobson and Powell getting the goals. But there is confirmation that Jack Watmore has been sold for six million, but 4.3 million will be allocated to our current transfer budget, which does mean we're still sat on. Let's have a look. 26.3 million. I mean, I really do want to get a central midfielder over the line quite desperately, really. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Something really good has just come to my attention. That Arnie Meyer has gone to a different club, but he still has that release clause. The 20.4 million release clause, and he is worth 30 million. And now he has changed to another club, still has that same release clause, and it is allowing us to go for it. So there we go. We're going to go for Arnie Meyer. That is absolutely insane. You would think that they would wipe out that release clause once signing him because he did sign a pre-contract, it looks like, with someone else, with uh, with Frankfurt. So now we're going to go for him and take him off the hands within a few days of him being at the club. That is absolutely ridiculous, but I am not complaining whatsoever. He's absolutely ideal as well. Okay, that's, that's put me in a good mood. That has put me in a really good mood. Go on, Arnie lad. He's literally just walked through at his first training session then we've contacted him and said, come on, come to Sunderland, and he's happy as Larry. He's going to get a crucial squad role immediately because he's going to be by far our highest rated player or our best player at the club. We'll try a five-year deal, see if he'll take that. Yep, yeah, he's absolutely happy with that. You're not having a release clause, mate. Not a chance you are having a release clause, but they have laid down the markers for what they want in terms of wages. We'll give him 68k. They're happy with that, and Arnie Meyer now plays for Sunderland. Here he is, six foot one. He does have a player face. His attribute just completely 
point towards the direction of a midfielder that is going to absolutely boss their centre of midfield. His passing stats are great, his strength, his defensive stats are great. So a really good all-rounder in the centre of midfield to add to our team. So right now we have Ezekiel Barco, who has joined the club, and of course... Arnie Meyer as well and that does leave us with just 5.3 million but I'm hoping that once we do sell Nemecha and get through these um, these preseason friendly games as well these preseason tournament games I'm hoping we should be able to get enough money to bring Diop in and that'll pretty much be the transfer window done because I did say in the last episode I only wanted two or three really good players and that would be exactly that but we did lose 2-1 against Torino which is slightly annoying but Hey ho! But now to the semi-final of the uh, the preseason tournament. Come on, give us a win. We need the money. We need the money, and we lose by two goals to one. Of course we do, but we'll still get a little bit of money from the preseason tournament, just not as much as I would have liked. So we are now sat on nine million pounds in the transfer budget. So we're still waiting on players to be sold, i.e. Nemecha. I think that'll probably be that is pretty much what we're waiting on. Nemecha to be sold, so then we can go for the centre-back that we do want. We have received an offer for Elliot Embleton, 10.5 million, which I am going to reject. We don't, well, I'm just not going to respond to it because I don't want to sell him at all. So now it is literally just a case of waiting for an offer to come in for Nemecha. And speaking of which, we do get an offer for him from Bournemouth, 19.4 million. Now, hopefully we don't screw this up. I mean, I could just accept that, but then they're only going to give us about 16 million added to our transfer budget. It's worth 19.5 in itself. It says we can get up to 22.1. But uh, last time it didn't go so well. So I'll try and get a little bit more anyway. I know it is only a million or two. But even so, it's a, it's a difficult one. I mean, what we probably could do or maybe do is put him in as a player swap for Giot. But then we won't have enough, really. I'll see what I could do anyway. We'll see how much money we can get. I'll go for the 22 million, which he does suggest. 22 million. Please don't just walk away. Please don't just walk away. And he's gone for 19.6. Right, 21 million then. 21 million. Come on. Please don't walk away, Eddie. Don't walk away. That's a fair offer. That is a fair offer. Don't walk away. 19.6 again. Why are team has been so stingy? Right, okay. We'll go for 20 point... Oh, he's going to walk away. 20.3. Come on. 20.3 million. How is that annoying you so much? How? It's like 700k more than what you offered. You little freak, Eddie. You're a freak. This is becoming a bit of a nightmare. There's obviously some kind of barrier that is being hit every time we try and sell the Mecha. Teams aren't willing to pay over what he's, he's, set, he's set worth, like he's 19.5. They're not really budging past that at all. So um, we're going to have to just accept it, really, aren't we? We have received an offer for Elliot Harris, though. 2.25 million. How much is he actually worth? He's worth... Two million. I'll just accept that. I'm just going to accept that because just get that over the line and we could only really get an extra sort of 200k for him. We have a loan offer for uh, Benji Kimpioka. I might just accept it or I can put him off sale. I forgot to do that. I need to sell Kimpioka really, don't I? He's not going to get anywhere near the side and another loan move. It's just going to delay the inevitable of us selling him. So he is now on the transfer list, Benji Kimpioka. Right, so now we've had an offer again for Nemecha and this time it is from Leicester City. 19.5 million which is exactly what he's worth, and I'm terrified to even negotiate. Should I just accept that? Because 19.5 million, it's what he's worth. I might just accept it. I'm going to have to, because every time I try and negotiate remotely higher, they just walk away. So I've accepted 19.5 million for the Metro. Hopefully that goes over the line, and then we'll try and squeeze something uh, to try and get a Diop to the club. If we can't, we'll have to go for another centre-back. But there is confirmation that Elliot Harris has been sold. A measly 1.6 million has been added to the transfer budget. And there we are. Nemecha has been sold for 19.5 million and 15.5 has been added to our transfer budget. And here is an offer for Benji Kimpioka. 1.2 million. Everything is slowly but surely coming together now. 1.2 million is worth 950k. So I'm going to accept that. That's a very, very good offer indeed. And now we have added someone to our youth team, our youth squad. Matias Blanco, 5'9". He's a right winger. And he has a potential between 80 and 94 as well. So just giving you a quick update on the squad as well. But we are here. It is the first game of the season. But we do need to get a centre-back over the line. And this is the amount of money we do have. And I don't think we're going to be able to get Diop over the line. I might be able to go with a swap deal or something like that. Just to try and lessen the fee. 
but I don't think we're going to be able to do it. I really don't think we're going to be able to do it at all. And it's a player that I really want to bring in. He does have a player face. He's rated 83. It says we'll have to offer between 33.4 and 48.3 million, which we simply don't have. We don't have enough to settle the release clause as well. So this could be a bit of a difficult one. So we did just try and negotiate 4G up and have gone away and said they'll have a think about it, which usually means that they're going to come back with an absolutely massive offer, which just isn't going to work at all. But we are going to go in to this first game of the season against Arsenal, which should be a really difficult game. But we do have a couple of players that will be making their debuts. Barco and Maya will both be starting in this game. And this is the team that we're going to go with. We have Rose in goal, Declan John, Pinnock, Twanzeby and Hoover across the back with Maya and Mumba in the middle of the new partnership there. Paulinho on the right, Woodburn as the cam, Barco starting on the left-hand side with Parrott up top. Let's get into it. And here we are back on familiar territory. We're back at the stage of my life welcoming Arsenal. Now this is a season where I really, really want to push forward. Maybe get into sort of top eight, possibly even top six and see where we can go from there. Hopefully the quality additions of the likes of Barco and Maya in particular can really help us push up the table. There is Barco, number 19. I have given him, I have given Maya the number six as well in the center of midfield. And there is Troy Parrott hoping to add to his colossal amount of goals for us from last season. Can he have an even better season this time around? Come on, lads. Here is Hoover now. He does find Paulinho. Early doors. He does whip it in towards Parrott. And he's tried to get it on the volley. And it has been cleared away. It's a close start. It's a good start from us. Arsenal have signed Ndidi from Leicester. Very, very good central midfielder indeed. A play that I would have actually quite liked. But uh, I'm sure he would have been worth an absolute ton right now. Arsenal's number eight. Here is Barco, on for Meyer. Nicely done, Meyer too. Bolly Mumba, help him out, get it out wide, it is. Hoover flicks it on first time for Paulinho, who digs it across goal, and it's just a bit behind. Parrot, and it is cleared away. Martinelli coming down this left side for Arsenal, catch up with him, great challenge there. Hoover, but we do concede a corner. Get it away, well played. Now here is Martinelli again down this left side. Good chance for them to get the ball in the box. Mumba trying to get across from it. That's been dinked in. Get it away. What are they doing here? It's a good chance for Arsenal. It's been blocked. Still in there. In the front of the post. And cleared away. Terrible defending. A real let off there for us. Here we are again. Talisa. It's a good chance for them. Brings it back for Martinelli. And it's a goal. We're a goal down. Lovely football from Arsenal. And it is Martinelli who gets the first goal of the game. And we concede in this first half. They've been knocking on the door. It's lovely football, to be fair. One touch and then just passes it into that bottom right-hand corner. Past Rose in goal. And this is not the start we wanted at all. Get in, Swim. Well in, Pinnock. Showing us what you're all about now at Mumba. Make your move on the right-hand side. It is Paulinho. Come on, son. Get him. Get it in. Keep going. It is Paulinho. Turn. Play it back. Surely. Finish it. Oh, it's been blocked. And again. Strike. Yes. Get in. There we go. And it's the man. It is Woodburn. And it's time. Who puts the ball in the back of the net and equalises on the stroke of half time. Get in. It was great play by Paulinho. He does pull it back. It's been blocked by Mumba shot. He does fall back to Woodburn who drills it into the bottom right hand corner. It's definitely a fair result so far. I think one is probably about fair. We've both had chances. Neither team really deserves to be behind in this one. On the half-time whistle, is going to go any second now. There it goes. one all. What a dramatic end to that first half. But can we get ourselves in the lead in the second? Taliso gets a book in for a foul on Parrot. Here it is. Here is the foul. Digs at the back of him. And we do get a free kick from him. It's quite a way out. I don't think I should shoot from here. I'm going to play it short. Parrot does give it into Pinocchi. He turns to Captain Swansby, the centre-backs. Linking up there, but it is Mumba now. Down this right side, he does get it cross goal towards the back post. Can he get his head on it? He can't, it's still in there. Mumba again, and what the hell is Mumba doing there? It ends up being a great ball for Declan John, though. He gets it again. Good ball, get your head on it. Still in there. Come on, come on, lads. Strike it. It's a, what's a strike that is by Troy Parrott. I could not get my words out at all. What a finish that is by Troy Parrott on the volley. It was a real scramble in the box, and that is a gorgeous volley by the... Hitman himself, it was cleared away again, what a volley that is son, get in and we are in the lead, 57 minutes in and it's Parrot's first goal this season in the Premier League, come on, Declan John down this left hand side trying to find Barco, it is slightly over hit but it is Barco, go on son get it in, get it in, it's still Barco, 
Nice little turn. Dinks the ball in. It's a good ball as well, but it has been headed away. Here is Meyer. Pings it out for Declan John. He puts it through the legs towards Mumba. It's still Mumba. He strikes it from distance and he's hit the, he's hit the post. The ball's back in the box and they've got it away for a corner. Oh, we've battered them in the second half here. Absolutely battered them. We do take the corner shot. Is Parrott who lets it roll across him. He does hit it. Parrott is still in the box. What is going on there? And Leno manages to collect it. Absolute domination. So much better in the second half. Well in Declan John intercepts in there and he puts it out wide for Paulinho who really needs a big season under his belt this year. And he does play over for Hoover who has loads of pace. Whips it in towards the back post towards Barco. And it has been headed away. Plenty of crosses coming in but the quality isn't quite there just yet. Now Marin and Brownhill are both going to come on for the final 10 minutes or so. Barco coming off and Mumba as well. And that is a terrible throw in. What the hell was I doing there? But we do still have the ball now. It is Brownhill and it's a good save. Almost making... An immediate impact there. It is a corner and it's Paulinho to take it. He whips it in towards the near post. It has been headed just wide. Brownhill again. He's had two efforts in the space of like 30 seconds. Get across. Well played. Can we break here now? It is Paulinho. On to Brownhill. He's been excellent since coming on. It is Woodburn. Switch the play. Switch the play. Here is Declan John. Flicks it over the top for Marin. This is lovely football. Marin gets it in. And it is still in the box. Cleared away. Only just... Come on, let's get a third. Let's get a third. Two minutes added on. And it looks like three points are going to be remaining with us at this stage of my life. Blow the whistle, ref. Just blow it. Arsenal seem quite content at keeping the ball. And there goes a the full time whistle. Three points. And it's a great comeback and a great start to the season against Arsenal. We were a very, very good side, by the way. But we just absolutely dominated that second half and managed to pull back to 2-1. Okay guys, so that will be the end of the episode and this is how the league table looks. Of course, it's only a game in play so we don't really need to look too deep into uh, into the league table right now. But what I will do, I will show you guys the transfer budget. We currently have 30, 31 Point nine million in there now I want a really really good centre back so if you guys want to start commenting down below what centre back I should go for then by all means do so because it doesn't look like we're going to be going to be able to get Jop over the line but that'll be it guys if you have enjoyed this episode please hit the like button for me it'd be massively massively appreciated and subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully fledged member of the Sony army but for now you take care and stay jamming